Mercy. Good morning, Mercy. Mercy. Why do you guys you hear, have Dada? to the weather in here? You know what I was told growing up? Trapping. All we heated with was a wood stove. And Mimi and Papa said, go get another layer of clothes on. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> you kids got HVAC in here. How did y'all sleep with no fan noise? Did you like yeah. it? Did you? I don't know. I came out here early <laughs> walking yeah. around and y'all started to wrestle. Yeah. So those footsteps. I see what you're doing, mama. You're a little smarter than the average mama bear. <laughs> <laughs> One little sound in the floor and they all three of them started wrestling. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. Yeah, exactly. There sleep. is no getting up early when they hear silence. <laughs> So you might be on to something. I'm turning on every fan in the town. Mama's on to something. <laughs> All right. Raise your hand if you want to do a road trip. No! Yes. What we, lo what we lovingly call a godcation. All right. Chapman, Chapman Salem. Salem. Road trip or more packing at the house? Road trip. Road trip. Road trip. <laughs> I want to do more packing. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Because I'm going to get well, babe, between you woke us up with a redirection. The Lord spoke to you last night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you think, baby? Are you okay with a trip?
you get your surprises. Huh? Chapman wanted to get surprises for everybody. <laughs> From John's. <laughs> this guy is on something new. <laughs> oh. We don't do the Dollar General. We do the John Henry General. I think I will. Good morning, Darren. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. We got pomegranates. You got? Oh, sweet. We'll have to come back for some. Addie loves pomegranates. Let Addie come in, or you could buy her a pomegranate as one of her treats. Well, that can be just to, when we get back. Do you have your wallet? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you take a, the five dollars off? Um, oh, I'm sure. Let's see I'll, here. I'll, I'll yeah. lock in there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Chapman. So, wanna? Hold on, hold on. Let me make sure. It That's twenty dollars. Just give her this. Oh. Okay, so now it's seventeen ninety-five. Right. Mm -hmm. Out of twenty. Out of twenty. Thank you. Good job, Chapman. to get those five dollar off yes it is Coupons. five dollars off is the best yes it is folks yes it is christmas is coming chapman you did good bud you did good now you guys have to have a fun road trip. <laughs> you want me to open them? No, not yet. Okay. Don't open them yet. Okay. Thank you. Don't open it. Yeah. Ooh, he got it. It's a game for the trip. Thank you. <laughs> it's a bingo game, Gabriella. I love this game. I'll help you. I'll open it. Hey. Oh, my girl got Addie on me. He got you the, the pine that you said you, he said you would love. He loves pineapple. Mm. Pineapple. Mm. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Okay. I just showed you over. He's gonna open up and see the pineapple shaped one. So guys, you, this bingo game is a road trip bingo. When you see those things, you need to you close see these it. Things on the road, you close it. Yeah. Good job. All right. Whoever gets five in a row. You're right. Yeah. The gales, the gales play because they got the same. The boys play. Yeah. Oh, so the girls and boys. The girls and boys get the same one. He yeah. did that. Yeah. Chapman, yeah. I'm so proud of you, bud. It's very nice of you wanting to give your siblings some things today for the trip. Pumpkin whoopie pie. That is my love language. Pumpkin. 
I went in John's twice and still didn't get everything I needed. So my lovely bride had to go ah, clean they, up my they mess. They see the strong family coming. <laughs> no, Jackie beautiful. came up to me and said, did you, okay, you didn't get the, did you get those? Anyway, go ahead, what'd she say? Jackie said, we got blackberries. Ah, it's like, okay, bring me a flat. They have something else there. I thought you, she would have told you, we'll go what? back and get it later. What else did they have, Chapman, when we went in there? What did she say we have? Pomegranates. I should have got one. She did tell me that, too. Yeah. But I said, we'll come back because that's and then in the house. I said I was going to come back for the blackberries, and she was like, we might be out. I was like, oh, that's good. We can eat them on the road. You yeah, want to wash a couple in there? Can so, I have something? I got blackberries. Uh, all this stuff for the road is great. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. You ready to roll? Well, these are the Let's best go. gummies. I need a coffee for this pumpkin. Can... Mama. Mama. Well, maybe uh, we can stop at that get? Lexington place. Yeah. You, Mama, right. if you I didn't mean to hear. I meant to somewhere. Buy gummies in your bike, John Henry. Go there. Because <laughs> they are fruit gummies. And Those they taste, are cool. They you taste, got some, too. Ooh, you they taste better Mama. than, like, store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yucky gummies. Yeah. They taste better. <laughs> they taste yum. You want to save them? Salem, can you get in your seatbelt so we can go? Oh, you ate them all. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to fave them? Wow. You no, don't let me. Thank you, Chapman. He got you a nice treat. Anyway, the point is we're going again today to another place we've never been to, but we knew we were supposed to get up and drive there. And then, you know, this is the stuff we need to teach our children ways of God and so I knew we I was supposed to read Deuteronomy 11 Fix these words of mine in your hearts and your minds. Tie them, which symbolizes, you know, your spirit and your soul, your, you know, your mind, your, your soul, who you are as a person, heart, your spirit. Good job. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and your minds. T tie them as a symbol on your hands and bind them to your forehead. So. This is God saying, tie them around your hands, meaning symbolic of what you're doing, like what you do, whatever you put your hand to shall prosper, what you're doing for work and what you're doing to serve him. So tie them as a symbol around your hand, bind them to your forehead. So meaning bind them to your thoughts. This is symbolic again of what is, what is God, you know, think on these things, fix these words of mine in your heart, in your mind. Bind them to your forehead. Bind them to your thoughts. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you're sitting at home and when you're away on the road for a journey, when you're lying down and when you're getting up. Write them on. Okay, so, so it's like fix your word. Fix these words of God to your heart, to your mind. When you're working, when you're thinking of everything. Teach them to your children when you're at home and when you're away on a journey on the road. So like every time we're on the road, you know, what is God saying? Let's read the word. By default, your children will just hear it. They may not understand everything critically understand, but they're hearing it in their heart. God knew this. So as parents, we are to teach our children. 
We're to teach our children, whether we're at home or away, we're to teach that we're to write them on the door frame of our home and on our gates. So basically on the inside of your door frame, so on the, the inside of your home, you're to fix your thoughts, your heart, your mind, and your teachings to your children all on the words of God and on your gates, symbolically what you're going out of, out of your home. So into the world or into whatever you're doing, yeah. you're to continue that. Which is like, you know, uh, this is the kicker though. So that your days, this is what, this is the innate nature desire of, of ours as parents and as people, as human beings. And this is God's desire for us. So that our days and the days of our children may be long in the land that the Lord swore to give our ancestors as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. That, that, like, that, that is God's heart. The heart of God is to give us a long life here in the land of the living and to give that promise as well to our children. But it all, and I want to go and read this whole chapter because it's just the word you're going to say. Oh, God. Yeah. Because, I mean, this I is what it say, starts with. Was, when we're on a journey, where, where, yeah. what are we supposed to be teaching them that day? What are we reading? I was going to say, you know, the way you're reading it, how you're reading it, like you had to break it all down. What, you know, the doorpost, write it on your forehead. Like, what does all this mean? You know what I mean? And it's like, it's so funny because I'm sitting here listening to you and you talked about the thoughts or whatever. But th this is this is known information to humanity. We just call it motivation or encouragement. But like, it's taught in the world that thoughts become things. Well, that's just rooted in the word of God. Yeah. But everything and, is rooted so in the word what of I, God. That's what I was going to say. You know, 99.999999% of any motivational speech you've ever heard is rooted in the word of God. Either they know it or they don't. Yeah. And they've just translated it to make it make sense to today. And so it, it's amazing that you're sitting here talking about all this stuff and how you had to break it all down, which I love how you broke it all down, which is just like, man, if we only knew what encourages us, what motivates us, what, you know, how things are being taught to us. It's just coming from the Word. God is, God is brilliant, though, because He's telling, He knows how powerful our minds are, and He's trying to ground us, ground our thoughts, you know, and if you don't take every thought captive and submit it under the ways of God or the words of God, then you start playing the reels of what other people say about you or the world says about you or what, uh, you know, something uh, that that just isn't, isn't the character nature or nature of God. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and he, he knew that. And that's why he's telling you. I mean, he's like literally telling you every single scenario in which you need to be focusing on the words of God. So when you're, when you're sitting at home idle, when you're away on a journey, teaching it to your kids constantly, think about it. If we're constantly teaching to our children out of our mouth, it, it's overriding any thought. We're not having a coexisting thought in our mind while we're teaching. Yeah. So if he's telling us to fixate on it in our mind and heart and then do it while we're whatever we're thinking about, whatever you're doing with your hands, whenever you're working, whenever you're at home, whenever you're away, and you're constantly teaching your children these things, like by nature, everything then is flowing from what he's saying. Yeah. And why does all this matter? This is why, why I want to read the whole chapter. Yes, yeah. Really? Yeah. We passed where you guys went to pick him up? The place you ate at with Mimi? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where? I saw that. <laughs> Where? Like around here. Where are you here? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> but he said Olive Garden. I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my word. Yeah. Things that one of my children would never eat. But. Ah. All right. Love the Lord your God and keep his. This is Deuteronomy 11. Love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, decrees, laws, and commands always. 
you know, this is so amazing because now it's no longer like a written law, right? So it's not like this, this checklist of things that you have to adhere to. Okay, I love God, so I'm going to do this, do this, do this, do this. It's like, I love God, I have a personal relationship with Him, and He's convicting me of the ways, His character, and the things that today I'm going to maybe deal with or come against or... We have really got to get a horse trailer. I know. Can't be riding in this van with horses. <laughs> I'm convinced you can fit anything in a Ford Transit van. That's right. <laughs> Even the pony. <laughs> Remember today. I love this. I love that it is written in present tense. He's saying, remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experienced the discipline of the Lord your God. I just read that to you yesterday. The Hebrews 12 about disciplining us. Discipline, God disciplines those he loves. Oh yeah. And I His said, children. Are you in Proverbs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, no. Well, well, Hebrews. Hebrews. Oh. <laughs> the writer of Hebrews has been reading some Proverbs. <laughs> but, like, remember, like, your kids are not the ones that have experienced this with me yet. And they have not experienced his majesty, his mighty hand, his outstretched arm, the signs he performed, and the things he did in the heart of Egypt, both to Pharaoh the king and to the whole country, which is how God operates in nations. What he did to the Egyptian army, to the horses and chariots, how he overwhelmed them with the waters of the Red Sea, and how, as they were pursuing you, how the Lord brought lasting ruin on them. It was not your children who saw what he did for you in the wilderness until you arrived at this place.
listening to or you in general, you know, like and willing to uproot their life, move every four years, move every two years, get deployed for 18 months away from their family. Like they are gung-ho passionate, and I love those people because they protect our freedoms in this country, to listen to the orders that are given to them. And they don't have a choice. You don't get to decide like, oh, I had a five-year plan here at this base. You know, this was what I was planning to do. No. And so God operates the same way with his army. And if... If you're a Christian, you're in that army, and your general speaks to you daily because he is avoiding attacks. He is positioning to go on the offense. He's doing everything with his army in order to do what, you know, anyway. So that's why you have to understand, like, what is he saying today? Like, why are we driving, you know, wherever we're driving today? It's just like, we don't know, but he knows. And so there's some reason that we may not know about until we get there or until we get back or a year later. Yeah. That we will always, he always reveals to us why we did it. But anyway, so that's why, that, that's so what this is. That's how God operates. And most people don't understand that. People just think, oh, you know, I'm saved and it's good. And I get to now live my life and ask God to bless it. And it's like, no, you're saved. You're, you've been listening to an army now. Yeah. And you've got a general who's a king. Sometimes the army on the throne. At, <laughs> you know? But sometimes the nation's at peace. Yeah. And you enjoy peace and yeah. prosperity. But, and sometimes you're at war. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That's so good. You know, and there's such a progression, too. Like, there's a boot camp period. You oh. think, like, oh, I enlist. Okay, oh, I just got saved. Or even, not even just got saved. I'm like, I've been, I've been a Christian my whole yeah. life. But seven years ago, I radically took that walk to a different level. Like, I'm not just going to church every weekend. Like, I'm going to actually live this. Yeah. Like, I actually want to enlist in, yeah. in whatever we're doing. Which I want to go down that trail too. Yeah. Because there's E1, E2, E3, E4. Then there's officers. Then there's special forces. Then there's Navy SEALs. People don't understand that about, about being a Christian. They think it is an even playing field. And it is. But Everybody's going to be in heaven. That's the leaven of but the culture. There's, le there's levels. Sleep, sneaking into the church. Yeah. It's the, everybody gets a blue ribbon. Okay, so you may live a long way life in the land that the, that the Lord swore to give your ancestors. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. So it's like God has always wanted to give us abundance from our land. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and this is, you know, when you start getting rooted in what God wants for you and you see narratives that are opposite of that, like get rid of, you know, let's make raw milk illegal. Get rid of the cow. Get rid of, you know, it's just uh, producing seeds that when bees pollinated, they die in colonies. Like we have colonization death over genetically modified seeds, crops, killing the bees. I mean, it's like he wants to give us a land that is full of milk and honey. The devil is here. His, his agenda is to kill, steal, destroy. Kill, steal, destroy. It's a pretty easy playbook. So if you have things that are trying to kill, steal, and destroy your ability to live in the land, live a long life in the land, a land flowing with milk and honey, literal prosperity in what you're gaining from the land for food, because that food is your sustenance. It's the sustenance of your children from the land God has given you. If there is something that is coming to kill, steal, and destroy that, then it is not of God, period. It's just very easy to start seeing the counterfeits or start seeing the playbook of what is trying to take God's plan out. The land you're entering, this is fire. The land you're entering to take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you planted your seed and irrigated it by foot as in a vegetable garden. But the land you're crossing over to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys. What are we driving in? Surrounded by mountains, I swear. It's a land that drinks rain from heaven. 
It's a land that the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from the beginning of the year to its end. <laughs> Chapman, worry about yourself. You don't worry about Allegra. Boy, you guys, the level of accountability y'all offer each other is really incredible. <laughs> Kombucha is gold, man. This ain't no, this ain't no juice box. <laughs> she took advantage of her three sips. Oh my word, okay. It's, it's Addie and Gabriella's now, okay? Okay, God is, God is talking to us guys. Let's listen about this amazing land that he's talking about, that he, the eyes of the Lord and God himself is caring for continually from the beginning of the year to the end. I mean, the cyc cyclical nature of God is incredible. If you faithfully obey, see, and this is, this, I mean, God is giving you the little nuggets in every part. If you faithfully obey the commands I'm giving you today. Did you already eat something and not offer me a thing? What is going on in this car? You weren't in here. Were you? Really? <laughs> they all said, I'm hungry. Oh. You said that. Oh. <laughs> How many have you Ooh. Oh, the gummies. Listen to this. If you are faithful to obey the commands I'm giving you today, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and all your soul. Okay, here is the, the, the caveat. This is what we teach our children. This is what we have to do with our lives. Yes, Allegra Vale Grace. Step into a beef jerky. It's 29 yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> at a fun place to get something, okay? Oh. I found the new sign, Daddy. God I, says I that you sign. faithfully obey what I'm telling you today. I, love me I, with I all your heart and serve me with all your heart. I, I, I will send the rain on your I land need in need its season. both the autumn and the spring rains so that you may gather in your grain your new wine are you alive Come on now. your new wine and your olive oil and i will provide the grass in the field for your cattle Come on now. so that you will eat and be satisfied Come on now. he wants us to eat be satisfied have abundance Abundant land production, abundant wealth from the from the land he's bringing you into. He's just asking you, love me, serve me with all your heart, be faithful to me. That's what he's asking. And then I'm going to do all these things for you. I'm going to give you this long, abundant life, but be careful. Or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods bowing down to them. Then the Lord's anger, anger will burn against you. He will shut up the heavens so it will not rain. The ground will then produce. Seriously. He yeah. said shut up the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> and if it doesn't rain, your ground is not going to produce, will yield no produce. And you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. And this is what we started reading with. Fix these words of mine in your heart. So think about all these things now, God has said. Fix these things in your heart and in your mind. Tie them around your hand. Bind them on your forehead. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home. And when you walk, when you're away on a journey on the road, when you lie down and when you get up, write them on the door frames of your homes and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be long in the land. The land the Lord swore to give your ancestors as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. If you carefully observe all these commands I'm giving you to follow, to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to hold fast to him, 
Then the Lord will drive out these nations before you. You will dispossess nations larger and stronger than you. David will always defeat Goliath. And this is God's promise for that. I, I, he himself will fight for you. He will drive out those larger and stronger. Every place you set your foot will be yours. And David that's what you're saying. Defeat Goliath in the valley. Think about this. Everywhere we set our foot will be yours. You said, God sending us to this place we've never been. We're going to go there. We may we may know today why we're there. We, we may know when our children are grown up. We don't know where God is having us set our foot. Where God is taking you. Because one day he wants to bring your children into something he promised you. You stepped your foot there. I mean, it's like we have to understand the authority we're going to a place in and that things in the spirit realm maybe like living by faith is, is in essence walking by something you do not see yeah. so you may, you may not see why you're there today yeah. but God the obedience to God and the following him and stepping your foot somewhere anywhere you step your foot he said it's just crucial because it's what Jesus did when he sent them they said where do you want to prepare for the Passover supper he said, go to this town, find a man carrying a water pitcher. water pitcher, and he'll have a room prepped. And so it's just like, they didn't know everything that was going to unfold from, from that moment. Yeah. They just knew that he was sending them to a place to look for a man with a water pitcher. And so it's like, we just have a few clues, go to this place. We have like a thing to look that we're looking for, like a certain road. Yeah. And so you don't know what's going to unfold from all of that. Um, but you just have to be obedient. He still does that today. It's just, you know, it's not weird. It's not rare. People are still listening uh, and going, going places and we've, like we've that. We've heard the, you know, we hear people. We, we've come across people's stories like God told me to sell everything and pick up and move from Washington to Tennessee. Yeah. And, you know, uh, everybody thinks I'm crazy. Yeah, to the world they usually do. Yeah. Like. God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. He uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise things of the world. It is not wise to go somewhere you've never been and just sell everything and do all these things. And you're right. If you're doing it without the leading of God, you're right. It's foolish. It, it makes no sense. But if God is leading you to do it, that's how he uses things to completely become testimonies later that they're like I, I want what you have and then one time we we tried to we felt like so it's uh i don't know if that's the, oh, it's the phone we felt like um god was telling us to go to texas yeah oh yeah we just talked and about this. there was like three routes to go to texas there was on the gps sir. and every single route was blocked with a tornado hurricane hurricane whatever it was Every route got blocked. One, like, one, we were uh, even, one route, one highway had 20 feet was out of the yeah, highway. Yeah, it, the it was, road was take, washed it away. Was, it was, yeah. And so we were like, okay, well, let's leave the next day on this route. Yeah. And then the hurricane had moved over to that route. Yeah. And so it was The blocked. northern route. Yeah. yeah. And so we were so frustrated because up until that point for years, every time God told us to go somewhere, we got to the place, you know, we did the thing, it all made sense or it didn't make sense, but we were able to at least get to the destination. Yeah. And this time we were like, are we not hearing you? Like, did we, did we but miss we had it? just read Acts. And then we had stumbled upon the story in Acts that we, you know, yeah. we, we, I'm sure we've read it before, we but had we, not didn't, remember. we did not remember it. And it was literally when Paul was trying to go somewhere. Yeah. And, and the spirit of Jesus redirected blocked, twice. Blocked, yeah, blocked, blocked him from going to and sent him somewhere yeah. else. So it's like this what stuff was is real. Gonna say? But yeah, what were you gonna say? We said so then we stayed in Tennessee and then we went to Townsend. Yeah. Then we came back to Tennessee. Yeah. And stayed in the hotel. Then oh we yeah, went to yeah. Back. yeah, yeah. So we kind of made a little vacation because yes. we didn't go to Texas. So then we went back home. Came back here to the valley. So that's so it's, crazy. It's a real, yeah. it's a real, yeah. real thing here. Every place you set your foot will be yours. No one will be able to stand against you. The Lord your God, as He promised you, will put terror and fear of you on the whole land wherever you go. See, I'm setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the Lord your God, I'm giving you today, 
the curse if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn from the way I've commanded you today by following other gods which you have not known when the Lord your God brought you into this land you're entering to present possess you are to proclaim on Mount Gerizim the blessings and on Mount Evil the curses. Which is God is a black and white God. It, it is, it's black or white. It's this or that. There's no gray area. That's why it's like, I love how that communicates. I'm presenting two things. One's a blessing, one's a curse. It's very plain. It's, it's very simple. And so what we've created in Christianity is we have multiple blessings that we can choose from. And then we can just ask God, you know, we can pick. We can pick what it, no, there's, there's a blessing for your life. There's a road that leads to blessing, and there's a road that leads to, you know, yeah. no blessing. Yeah. And so this is not weighing the pros and cons list. These are all good options. Let's just pick one, which we communicate, you know. God loves us, and he wants you happy. Pick something, and he'll bless it. No, it's a blessing, or it's a curse. It's very simple. And really, it's, just, it's, it's not confusing. rooted in following me, loving me, serving me with all your heart or compromising and serving the gods of the, of the land of the people around you yeah. and, and doing things of the ways of the people around you and slipping into, you know, all these other things. It's, it's just very easy. It's like, it, it is. Yeah. So anyway. So you're to proclaim blessings on these mountains to where you're going. As you know, these mountains are across the Jordan westward. We're going 64 west. We are literally going westward. We're going westward. How are you sitting there? We've been west before. That's why I'm just like. But as you know, these mountains are across the Jordan westward towards the setting sun. That was in the thing. Sunset. Yes. Near the great trees of Mora in the territory of the Canaanites living there. Guys, look at the mountains over there when this hill goes away. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I'm telling you the fall colors. This beautiful? is the most beautiful place on earth. The sky is so clear. Yeah. It's, everything's so clear. You can see all the ranges. It's amazing. This is how it ends. I mean, it's pretty simple. You're about to cross over. You're going to enter and take possession of this land the Lord is giving you. And when you've taken it over and you're living there, be sure that you obey all these commands I'm setting before you today. I mean, this is crazy. Darren, you were just talking about the God of Angels armies. We get off to go to this coffee shop and we're driving through a military institute <laughs> that seriously looks like a fortified city. <laughs> What's a fortified city? City, fortified city. I mean, it look, it's got a stone wall. It's, you know, big buildings. It looks very um, strong, protected. It, it looks like a city, right? It doesn't look like a school. It's like protecting their city. That's yeah, yeah. It's very, very much like that. But, you know, this is, it's just crazy. We're literally trying to get croissants and coffees. Yeah, God drives us through. Military institution. Are you ready for some fresh croissants? Croissant? You want to get out? Can somebody help her get out? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Do they Judy, have inside? Thank you for parallel parking. DC days, it's been a while. Sissy, sissy. Beautiful small town of America. Where we're stopping, folks. Sweet. That's our peoples.
He's like one of our children. <laughs> Get pissed out, man. These are our friends, Juan and Daniel. Yes. Six kids in tow. Probably would prefer the farm stuff. But if it's not a Sunday or a Saturday, this works well. In a <laughs> it's true. It's true. This is latte love, of course. Morning bun. Pumpkin. Pumpkin cake. This parfait is like unreal. Fresh I mean, exactly. Anytime we go on trips, any park we spot, we pull over. So we found one. We were headed to one park, it was an hour away. Driving through this small little town, we saw a park. So. Someone's coming to buy shop. We pulled over. Give me those horses! <laughs> sweetie, sweetie. We found our spot, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> we did. We did. <laughs> we found it. This is the place to be. Place to be, huh? I think we know our next location we need to go. Can we see it? Uh-oh. Addie's been at the park saying this is her beach house. She's playing at the park saying, I'm driving a boat. I'm in my beach house in a little fort. <laughs> come over to this hammock. And that's the name of it. I think we need a November trip to the beach. What do you think, Bubba? You wanna go to the beach? You wanna go to the beach? Thanks, baby. I mean, we have literally entered into heaven. If y'all were wondering what heaven looks like, it looks like this. So we were driving, trying to get back home. And we just saw this amazing little place on the side of the road. And we were like, what is this? And it's an old dairy farm. I mean, it's incredible. And it's a little, little uh, store, little farm store. Dad, how are you able to jump there? It's the Homestead Dairy. You okay, bud? Got some sourdough bread from Seasons Yield. What's that place name in um, Haywoods? Some 
avocado and some dips. Oh yeah, and Chapman got some, what is this cake? So we ordered Chapman this pumpkin cake with, what's the spice on top? Chai, chai frosting. And then it was so good that he wanted to pay for his own slice <laughs> with his own money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was a good trip, huh, babe? It was good. It was. It, it was long. Yeah, I think. Oh boy, we are so kind of going anywhere with six kids, with even if it's just a day. It feels like it's a week. They're just getting harder and harder. Yeah, they are. It's true. That's why we're trying to find home. We're trying. We're trying. I don't know what's I don't know at this point. <laughs> right now, we know we can eat. <laughs> I mean, I'm super grateful like, I, that we can eth ethically buy food that we would want to raise ourselves. I guess that's what's really difficult. Gabriella um, is yelling out the window, hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. John's on the fourth yeah, one. Yeah. She keeps saying hi, John. No, no, this is what This is what I'm I would capture it, but she has no point. <laughs> She's naked. She's only two. Oh. Hi, John. That's so sweet. Hi, John. That's awesome. <laughs>